Matthew Moore's MM Wood Studio, and this is an excerpt from the Nakashima inspired dining table build. In this video, I'm going to show you how I approach cutting really large through mortises. So right now, right here, you can see the trestle assembly. Um, this trestle is five inches tall and its mortise is three inches tall, an inch and a quarter wide, and two and five eighths of an inch deep to accommodate this really large through tenon. So check out how I cut this large through tenon on this big post. After I marked up all these guys, it was time to head over to the table saw because I need to make a whole bunch of parts which are right here. These are a whole bunch of half inch plywood pieces and they're gonna make up the base for the router template that we're gonna to use to help us get some beautifully crisp mortises on these legs. So let me walk you through how I got here. The first thing I did was I took a piece of half inch plywood and believe it or not, I jointed it on both edges on the jointer. And then I took that piece of plywood and I cut a series of strips. The first strip I cut was one inch wide, and the second strip I cut was an inch and a quarter wide, and the third strip I cut was three inches wide. And then at the cross cut sled, the first thing I did was I squared up one end of my one and a quarter inch wide strip, and then I cut a piece three inches tall off. That will be the spacer for the mortise. I then cut two more pieces that were four and a half inches long. And then of my three inch wide strip, I cut two pieces to 12 inches long. And then with the one inch strip, I cut two pieces to 12 inches long. And that brings you to now. So what I wanna do is get the camera over here and walk you through gluing this guy up. So here we are with all the parts and I've got some um, type on three and I'm gonna apply glue onto these outer quarter inch wide pieces and not to the spacer which is the window for our mortise. So let's get to it. And let's kind of get everything together. And grab a couple of clamps here. I'm just going to make sure everything is nice and flush. Everything's tight against this spacer piece. And I'm just going to knock out the spacer. And I'll clean up my squeeze out. And I'll let this sit for a half hour or so. Once your base is glued up, go over to the table saw and trim off the ends to make sure it's nice and square. So I'm over here at the drill press and I have chucked up an inch and an eighth Forstner bit. And um, what I'm going to do is just drill a little bit more than halfway down the depth from both sides, removing material. This way it'll help prevent any blowout. And um, can I get the bit all the way through and all the way to the bottom? Sure. I just don't feel like doing it. This is what I want to do instead. So I'm going to, again, drill down a little bit more than halfway through, removing waste on one side, flipping it over, and removing waste on the other side. So what I do now is I take the bit and I line it up on that center line that we drew earlier, get close to where my wall should be, and now I know I can drill there. Okay, so over here at the bench, what I want to do is take a chisel and I want to just clean up and connect these ridges here. I want to reduce the amount of material the router bit has to remove when it is doing its job. So just slowly work down. There's no rush here. And now I'm going to help myself out in these corners as well. 
the idea behind this is the more work you do now, the less work you have to do with the router, the less strain, the better the, the cut is going to be. And that's what we're looking for. Okay, once you've done one side, flip it over and start on the other side. So now it's time to get the base for the router set up on this piece so that we can add the fence. So what I want to do is bring the piece over and just try to align it to those lines I drew. And then once I'm close, I'm bring my square over and adjust the base to the square. There we go. Okay, clamp down, I'm gonna double check. That's good. Now I come on this side. I'm gonna get rid of the quick clamp and go to another clamp with more holding power. Check for square. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is take my square here and set the depth to from the outer edge here until the actual post itself. Tighten that up and draw a line. Then I'm going to take a piece for my fence, line that up with the line, and draw another line. Okay, I've got a drill of a 332nd of an inch bit because I'm going to use some number six screws here. And I'm just going to drill some holes. These are going to be pilot holes for my screws. I'm going to switch over to a countersink bit. And I can check my depth by putting my screw head in and seeing if it disappears inside of there. Which it does. Making sure first to clear out any waste from drilling through. Okay, I'm going to bring over the fence and two more clamps. And what I want to do is clamp the fence to the base. Now that everything's nice and tight and flush, I can come in and drill some holes. With the jig now complete, and most of the waste removed from my mortise, what I'm going to do is take this small router of mine, and I've got a, a quarter inch shank bit in it. It's got a bearing on the bottom, and it's a, a straight edge knives, and I'm gonna come around and just slowly work all the way around, removing the rest of the waste, uh, so I get a nice crisp wall on my mortise referencing the hole in our jig that is the window for our mortise size. Whatever you do now, do not take this off. We've got some nice crisp corners here we can reference. So I'm going to take my chisel and just slowly work across referencing those corners to square up my mortise. And now I'll come in with a bigger chisel and just reference from the edges and pare down just in case I was off by a little bit when I was removing material. Once you get one corner done, come around and do all four corners. And now you can continue routing away more waste by taking the bearing itself and referencing it against what you just removed. Now that I've removed some more waste, I'm going to come back in with my chisels and continue to uh, go down. Ok, 
Okay, I have one more pass to go. I gotta get just a little bit deeper down here so I can come from the other side of the top bearing bit, ride against the mortise that I've cut and remove the rest of the material on the other side, making a really nice clean through mortise. And now the bottom bearing bit, I have the post flipped around and this will ride against the material that we just removed and it'll clean up this side of the mortise. So let's get to it. Now on this side, we don't have anything to reference like we did with the other side of the jig. So what I'm gonna do is bring up a square and uh, take a marking knife, make a line. I'll do that on both sides. And I'll continue this wall with the line as well. And now I can start to work to my lines, or my knife lines that is. Now I've gone just down a little bit. There's a lot of material there, but I just wanted to establish some lines. I'll come with my smaller chisel. Just work the corners of each of those pieces until less material remains, and I can connect everything. There we go, very nicely, just like that. All right, well, I hope you guys liked that video. Um, this is just one way you could approach this. Uh, there's many other ways you can approach this type of uh, through mortise as well. But I hope you found this uh, educational and maybe something you can use in your shop one day. Um, the Nakashima Inspired Dining Table Project is a great project. If you've ever been looking to accomplish something like this, um, I really say you should go ahead and do it. It's a beautiful dining table. You would love to eat at this dining table for the rest of your life. Now, if you want to watch other videos um, from the Nakashima Inspired Build, here on my YouTube channel, right over here in the cards as well in this, and in the description, I'll have links to the playlist to have all the Nakashima videos, weekly shop updates, as well as quick tips, etc., that come out of this build. So as always, please subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. If you're watching this on Facebook, hit the like button, share in your timeline, and head over to MM Wood Studio and like us there as well. And as always, have a great week in the shop.